Welcome to the Boonesboro Class of 2020 Baccalaureate Service. And now for the opening words, Senior Josephine Hardings. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for Boonesboro High School's annual baccalaureate ceremony. Despite the difficulties the class of 2020 has endured, we are excited to be able to uphold the tradition of this ceremony. It is clear just how quickly life can change over the course of a few short months or even a few days. It is a true test of our character to see how we are able to handle these unexpected times. Even with these challenges, we can always count on God. He guides us through the good times and the difficult ones. He tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. If ever there was a time in our short lives where we should lean on him, this last semester demonstrates that idea. If we put that into practice, we can find a pathway to peace leaning on God and learning from God one day at a time. For a prayer, Senior Lauren Kaufman. Heavenly Father, surround those who are graduating with your grace. Bless them with hope so that they may move into the future with eager and open hearts. Help them to put the knowledge, skills, and insights gained through their education to use for the good of all humankind. Inspire them to believe in the goodness of life, even when faced with challenges and difficulties. As they commence with their lives, may they grow ever more grateful and wise. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son. Amen. Now for a musical selection from senior Jack Jacobcheck playing You Raise Me Up on the violin.
For scripture readings, Senior Faith Garachi. The first verse comes from Psalm 25, 4 through 5. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. The second verse is from Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. As of 2020, let me start by opening us up in a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to, to just gather today and celebrate the things you've done, for allowing them to get to this point in their life and to look forward to the things to come. We thank you, God, and ask that you help us to have a great mindset on what you've blessed us with. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, first off, I need to say congratulations, right? It'd be terribly rude if I didn't. So, me, Nick Seek, with the Washington County Fellowship of Christian Athletes, am telling you, congratulations. Congratulations on another year of schooling. On enduring the eye-straining pandemic of COVID-19's virtual schooling. And then ultimately, congratulations on graduating to this beautiful time of high school. I, I remember for me, it was a day of joy, anticipation, but also celebration. See, some of us are going to leave here today. For me, I'm probably going to leave and tell everyone about this message and tell them to celebrate with you guys. But for some of you, you're going to go off and celebrate with friends and family. You might have a barbecue. Others of you will keep it simple. See, some of you are going to go to your favorite palace, right? a, a place fit for a king, or where there's golden arts, a cow encouraging you to eat more chicken. That's right. I'm talking about your favorite fast food restaurant. Because let's not lie to ourselves. There's some pretty great things that come from it. There's convenience for one. It's quick to get. It's cheap. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Also, who's ever talked about really sacrificing much to get fast food? You're not giving an arm and a leg compared to eating at a fancy steak restaurant. And then... If you do eat it, no one's going to judge you because they're doing the same thing. But on the other hand of things, if you do eat it, it satisfies your stomach and may not be so nutritious. I want you to track with me on this and see where I'm going. See, could you imagine if you were to eat one meal a day from a fast food restaurant some of you are thinking, Nick, I'm already doing that. What are you talking about? Well, let's hype up the steaks a little bit. Could you imagine if you were to eat it three meals a day? Well, here's what would happen. And I'm going to throw in dessert just because I like dessert. I got a sweet tooth and, and I'm unhealthy at heart. Here's, here's what your nutrition would look like if you were to have fast food three, three meals a day. And I'm going to compare it also to, well, a healthy nutrition for the most part. You see, for a healthy nutrition, you're looking at about 2,000 to 2,500 calories a day. But with fast food, you're looking at 3,610 calories. As far as the sodium in any given day, a healthy diet would say 2,300 milligrams. Fast food, on the other hand, is not saying the same. In fact, it doubles to about 5,110 milligrams of sodium, which is salt. For fat, you've got about 70 grams in a healthy nutrition, but fast food says 188 grams. Carbs, 310 grams. An healthy diet, 343. And fast food, okay, so we're not too far off from carbs at least. Protein, 50 grams in a healthy nutrition and 138 in fast food. 
And all my muscle guys and gym glowers are all like, yeah, protein. But a healthy nutrition would also say only have maybe 90 grams of sugar a day. Fast food, and this is why it's one of my favorite things, says, no, we're going to have about 153 grams of sugar. Now, that's insane. When you look at the difference between a healthy nutrition and an unhealthy one. But could you imagine if this went a step further? Not even on a nutrition base. I'm not talking about food, but I'm talking about in life. See, if, what if we took the mentality of fast food and applied it to our everyday lives, particularly your walk with Christ as you go out from here in high school? See, if you take that fast food mentality, your stomach's full, right? Your spiritual stomach is filled. But it's not healthy. There's nothing long-term or life-giving from it. On the one hand, it's quick. There's not much sacrifice. And it's, it's right there waiting for you. It's cheap. And you can still say, I ate. But if we take a fast food mentality and apply it to our Christian faith, guys, we're doomed. Because there's nothing good being given to you. I call this person who has that mentality of fast food and wants to follow Christ a mit Christian. See, nobody wants to be a mick Christian because there's nothing good that's coming from it. Instead, we should be wanting to live for God. So if you hear one phrase today, one catchphrase above anything else I'm about to speak, listen now. Don't be a mick Christian. Live for the one true God. I'm going to say it again. Don't be a mick Christian. Live for for the one true God. Some of you are asking, like, what does this mean? Well, rather than me speaking what I think, because it's a funny play on words with fast food and the Christian faith, I want to kind of echo some of what Peter's saying in his first letter. See, he reads this, and I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to unpack it a little bit. He says, so then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. For if you suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires. But you'll be anxious to do the will of God. You've had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy. Their immorality and lust. Their feasting and drunkenness. And wild parties. And their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends. Right? These are your friends who, when you weren't following Christ were one of the guys, right? One of the girls, they were right there beside you. It says, they're surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So essentially saying, when you were with them, destroying your life, they were all right there saying, yeah, man, we got this. But then you turn away and they're like, dude, why are you trying to make better? That's, that's dumb. He goes and says, they slander you. Right, They make fun of you. But he says, remember that they will have to face God who stands ready to judge everyone, both the living and the dead. That is why the good news was preached. Right, This is the gospel. And he goes on to talk about how the end of the world is coming soon, meaning at some point Christ is going to come back and fix this world. And then he tells you to be disciplined in your prayers. He tells you to share love for one another. And uh, open up your home. Be hospitable for those around you. And then he goes on in verses 10 to 11 of chapter 4 and talks about how God has gifted you in mighty ways. And, and he wants you to use them, whether it be speaking or something simple, like giving the best God-loving hugs. He's gifted you in mighty ways to help those around you. You see, so here's what I want you to hear. Don't have a fast food mentality in your faith as you go out, whether it be military, college, everyday workforce, a trade school, whatever it may be. Don't have a fast food mentality like the friends of old, right? Before Jesus purchased you from sin and said, I want you to follow me rather than the world. Don't have a fast food mentality where you say, 
I want my triple patty burger, the greasy thing, right? That's quick, and I go to parties, and then on top of that, stack some, a little bit of alcohol. On top of that is stack maybe some drugs. A few wild nights is your next party. Some things that you might regret, but let's be honest, it felt good in the moment. All smothered in two buns of saying, I was happy. Compare that to then the Mick Christian. He's the one who's saying, I'm half in, half out. He's the one who, while he's being slandered, and here's what I don't want you to be, is going off and saying, I'm going to follow God, but I'm wrestling in this tension of, I, I want the world, I want to live for God. Well, God in his word says, don't be in the middle. So I want you to either be with me or go the other way because let's be honest, it's not good to be in the middle. You can't say I'm eating healthy and only eat McDonald's or Burger King or fat or any other fast food restaurant. And I'm not trying to knock those because I'm probably going to eat it when I leave from speaking. But instead, live for God. See, 1 Peter 4, 1 through 11 just charged us to do that. When he says, God has gifted you in mighty ways, so go out and use them. When he says, love one another, go out and love them. When he says, your friends are going to slander you for trying to do better, for following the Lord, who cares? Because everyone is going to get down on one knee and say, God, you are God. The only question is, are you going to be on the side that's saying, now I can't wait to spend eternity with you. Or now I'm going to stand the rest of eternity apart from you. But there's two choices you can make. And I want to leave you with this. Don't be the Mick Christian. That's your one choice. The one who says he wants God, but lives like a fast food mentality. Doing whatever he wants. Not spending time in prayer or reading his Bible, but doing just enough. Like going to church on Sundays. Instead, I want you to live for God. Go out, class of 2020, and praise him. Once again, I want to say congratulations and God bless. This is a huge mile marker, and I'm so blessed to get to share this moment with you. So, class of 2020, what are you going to do? Not be a mick Christian, but live for God. Congratulations. Thank you to Mr. Nick Seek for coming to be our keynote speaker from the FCA. And now a musical selection from senior valedictorian Christopher Lee. And now to finish us off, some closing remarks from senior Adam Metz. 
Thank you. Our class was born in the midst of 9-11 when panic and terror threatened the world. Our parents were able to adapt and overcome. They were able to raise us to be strong, confident citizens that will one day change the world. Now, as we graduate from high school and move on to our next step in our lives, we are doing so in another time of panic and terror in the world. That is two major milestones in our lives that have occurred in such a time. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In times such as these, and certainly because it has happened more than once to our class, we have to be faithful, trust, and hope in the Lord, and we will succeed. As faith read in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, God has a plan for us and he will provide. We must trust in the Lord that he has a plan for us and that God, that good things will come from these trying times. Please join me in a closing with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to graduate in person with our classmates and to do more than we originally expected for graduation. It is truly the little things that matter during these trying times, and we are thankful for that opportunity. We ask that you watch over us and guide us along each of our individual paths in life. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us this evening for the Class of 2020 Baccalaureate Service. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Go Warriors!